Good morning. I'm standing up here looking at an empty church. Uh, very strange. Different feeling than I've ever had before in a serious time. Uh, but God's word has got to be preached. It's the only thing that will help us. The only thing that will get us through. And uh, that's what we're going to do today. I appreciate everybody respecting uh, our higher authorities that we have to if we set the example hopefully other people will follow but we're uh, we're going to continue to preach the word might be a week or two before we can get back here but we will get back but we've got to continue to serve God while we're not here but let's open in prayer Lord we love you thank you so much for this morning thank you Lord for uh, God having a pulpit that we can stand behind having a word that can help us having a spirit that can uh, direct us, Lord, and uh, God, your power that can save us and heal us, Lord. We do pray over our nation, over our county, Lord, and uh, over our church, God, this morning. We need your help so bad, and Lord, I pray, uh, God, for a few minutes you take your word and help us, help me, help your people, encourage us, strengthen us, give us direction this morning, in Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to take my scripture this morning out of Second Chronicles 7. Very familiar scripture. I'll start in verse number 13 and use verse number 14. But uh, this is scripture that the whole church should know. You should, uh, you should know the direction it gives us. But I think it's, uh, we're in a day that it, it's time to apply it. And verse number 13 says, If I, being God, shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. Listen to this word that keeps continuing. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, key word, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. There's a word that keeps coming up, if. And I want you to listen to what it says as, as I look at it again. It says, If I shut up heaven, there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. If you look up the word pestilence, it means an uncurable disease or a serious growing problem. And there's no doubt that that's where we're at right now. We're in a time of pestilence, a time that our country's never seen a time that's affecting each home, each individual, whether they'll admit it or acknowledge it or joke about it or whatever it is. We're in a time of pestilence and a, a time of trouble. And the Bible says right here, if he sends it among, and now that word among is big, if he sends it among his people, that means God will not send any pestilence, any disease, any hurt on his people. But if it's among us, then that means it's around us. If it's around us, then that means we'll be affected by it. And today we're affected. Every child of God in the United States, in the world, is affected by pestilence. We're affected by the diseases. We're affected by the sin that comes with it. We're affected by all of it today. And it's among us. It's not sin on God's people, but it is a sin among us. Amen. Now listen to what the Bible says. Among my people, but there is an answer. There, we've saw three ifs so far, but there is another if that starts in verse 14. It said, if my people. Amen. So that's God's people. That's the redeemed. That's the saved. That's the blood bought. That is the Christian that's listening this morning, the one that's looking for help, the one that desires a move of God, the one that wants to trust God for the answers. Amen. Now we can turn to science, we can turn to doctors, and we all will if it comes to that, but we've got to trust God, amen, even to give them the answer. So if my people, if God's people, if the church, the body of Christ, which are called by His name, which, which are going to take the stand and be known as the child of God, listen to what it says, shall humble themselves. That's pretty tough. In desperate times, we want to use courage. We want to use bravery. We want to, to show that we can do it ourselves. We want to stand up and, and take charge. We want control. But humility, he said, if his people, which are called by, by his name, will humble themselves, that means we must admit that it's out of our hands. We must admit we have no control. We must admit we're powerless. Amen. Except God. Uh, courage 
Amen. And faith are different things. Faith sometimes is having enough faith to trust God, allow Him to move and stay where you're at. Flesh will build courage. Flesh will, will make you think that you have to do it yourself. But faith will wait upon the Lord. So God's people must humble themselves. Amen. This may be a humbling time. This may be a hard time. This may be a time that we have no choice but to be humbled. But today is the day to go ahead and humble yourselves, to, to get down on your face. And he said if they will humble themselves and pray. Uh, it's time this morning, on this Sunday morning, it's about dinner time now, about 12 o'clock. It's time for homes to get down. It's time for husband and wife, husbands and wives Amen. To join hands, it's time for children. It's time for families to come together and grab hands and pray, agreeing and touching that God will and can move for His people. Amen. It's time to humble yourself. Uh, there's something humbling about getting down on your knees before God and admitting that, God, it's out of my control. I have no power. I have no way in myself to control this. So it's time today to humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face. If we seek God's face, there's only one way, and I have it in front of me this morning. It's my Bible, the Word of God. If we seek God, we will consult God. We will consult His Word. We can find out how people made it through times before. We can find out what the Bible says will happen now, and we can find out how we get through it. God will be with us. He'll never leave us, never forsake us. Amen. And He said He would never see His seed begging bread. Amen. I'm amening myself this morning because there's nobody here to amen me. But listen to what the Bible says. If we humble ourselves and pray and seek His face, and listen to this right here, and turn from their wicked ways. And I was studying on that this morning, and the first thing that came to my mind was the state of the world. And in the state of the world there was, listen to this statistic right here, there was 42.4 million abortions in the world in 2019. We can look at statistics on drunk driving deaths. We can look at statistics on murders. We can look at statistics on, uh, on people that steal. We can look at statistics on drug addicts, and we can look at all these statistics. But he didn't say if the world would humble itself. He didn't say if the world would seek his face. He didn't say if the world would pray he said, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn from their wicked ways. So it's time that we're as the church, me as the pastor, and you as the body, you as the deacons, you as the song leaders, you as the member, the Sunday school teachers, humble yourselves and pray and turn from your wicked ways. It's individual. It's personal. It's each member of the body of Christ to find the impurities, to find the sin, to get that out of their lives where they can be humble and pray and get a hold of God. It's time this morning that the church turns to God, nothing else, that we admit if, we, if you humble yourself before God, if you pray, if you do it sincerely, you will find yourself confessing out loud your sins, acknowledging them, asking forgiveness of them, and turning from them. When the church gets holy, when the body of Christ gets holy, when the ones that are out there, and we don't have to be in a building, we don't have to be in these pews, we don't have to be on this altar, we can be in our homes as a body this morning. We can be in different places, but we'll be one body, one, one group this morning and humble ourselves and pray and get the sin out of our lives and be pure, be ready. Be ready. Be, be able to trust in God and call on God. Don't wait till the last minute. Don't wait till the, till the last second comes and then try to take care of it. We've got to do it today. And listen to this right here. And I'll be done in just a few minutes. But listen, if we turn from our wicked ways, he said then. I guess the title of this message would be if. Because we've got three or four ifs right there, stipulations. That if you do this, he said, then I'll hear from heaven. God's in heaven this morning, and he's not surprised. He's not shocked. He's not caught off guard. He's not afraid. He's not worried. He's not trying to figure out what to do. He's not trying to come up with a plan. He's not looking for a cure. He's waiting on his people, his people which are called by his name, 
to humble themselves and pray, seek His face, turn from their wicked ways, get the sin out of their life, get holy, get clean. He said, then I will hear from heaven. Jesus is seated on the right hand of the Father this morning, making intercession for the saints, listening for me, listening for you, listening for us to call upon His name. He's got the cure. He is the healer. The Bible says that there's healing in His wings, and I believe that, or I wouldn't have drove up here this morning. And He said, He'll hear from heaven, and I want you to listen to this order. Listen very close as we close. He said, He'll hear from heaven, and number one, He'll forgive their sin. The first thing in the United States and the world that God wants to take care of is the sin problem. We've got a lot of problems. We've got health problems. We're going to have economic problems. We're going to have all kinds of things that has been a security blanket. It may be taken away, but we'll still have one problem, and that's a sin problem. God wants to take care of that, number one. If you're out there this morning, you've never been born again. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He resurrected after three days. He's ascended into heaven, sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for all the saints. Number one, you must be born again. But number two, he said he'll hear from heaven and heal our land. God is able to heal with one word, with one word this morning. Amongst all the chaos, God can look down from heaven. He can forgive just like he did in the Bible with so many people. Man lowered down through a roof. God forgave his sin, told him to get up and walk. He was made whole. God can heal the nation. But it's not up to the scientists, it's not up to the hospital, it's not up to the pharmacies. It rests on the shoulders of God's people to pray, to pray when you're afraid, to pray when you don't feel like you're getting through, to pray when you feel like it's not going to help, to pray when the numbers are growing, to pray. Humble ourselves. If we go through whatever we're going to go through, and we come out on the other side, closer to God, it'll be worth it. This morning, wherever you're at, at home, at a family's house, whatever it is, pray this morning. Humble yourselves. Worship God. You don't, you don't have to be in church. But praise God when we do get back. Praise God when I can look out here and see our congregation. It's not the same. But God's the same, today, yesterday, and forevermore. But we've got to do our part. The church has to do its part. Lord, we love you this morning. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you for your power, your anointing. And thank you, God. I didn't even know this was possible, Lord, but with you all things are possible. Your anointing would break every yoke. You're God, and I thank you for that this morning. You're a healer. Lord, we pray this morning, pleading the blood of Jesus, God, what you shed on the cross for our sins. You took stripes for our healing. God, I claim that this morning. I pray that your church would uh, draw to that. God, it's all, all the cross. God, it's all Calvary. It's all what you've done, and it's all about Jesus this morning. Lord, we thank you for that. We stand on that. We love you. Lord, I pray whoever listens to this would get something, encouragement, strength, and get closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen.